Tis the season for holiday performances, and it's always a key time for arts groups relying on holiday fair to bring in crowds. But this holiday season comes as arts organizations, especially in smaller and mid-sized cities, continue to wrestle with the pandemic and its impact. Jeffrey Brown traveled to Wichita, Kansas, to see how some are adapting and applying lessons learned during the shutdown. It's for our Arts and Culture series, Canvas. The cast of Music Theater Wichita's holiday show, rehearsing for the big event. The 51-year-old company, one of this city's leading arts groups, is known for its extensive summer season. Can we have our arms here? as opposed to that. Two years ago, it was scheduled to hold its first winter holiday show. Then came the pandemic. Twice and you put her down, awesome. Now what was once a dream to artistic director Brian Markham was finally ready for its debut. It's a huge show with over 100 people in it and a great orchestra on stage. And we're hoping that it'll draw the people in. Wichita, in the heart of the Great Plains and with a population near 400,000, the largest city in Kansas, is known for its agriculture, aircraft manufacturing companies, universities, and more. It's also home to a long thriving arts community. Music Theater Wichita attracts actors from far and wide. It's a place many come through and often return to, even if they build careers in New York and other large cities. The pandemic became a struggle to survive and raised fundamental questions about the future viability of theater, audiences, and performers. People weren't buying tickets to come to see the shows. There were moments where we had to look and go like, we've been doing uh, this this way for 50 years and the show has to go on. But is there a way where we can do it where people feel more supported and it's more equitable for people? It was a, there was a time in the theatrical community where we all stopped and looked and thought, is this good for everyone's mental health? Like, do we need to reevaluate how we do things? Changes were made, spacing out productions and lengthening the season, putting on shorter shows with smaller casts an outdoor performance at a nearby amphitheater. After a complete shutdown in 2020, Music Theater Wichita is back. But attendance is down nearly a third since 2019. So you two are going Markham, who joined the organization just months before it closed its doors, wants to build excitement with new productions. We are really known for doing the Rodgers and Hammersteins and all the classics. One of our most popular shows this summer was Kinky Boots. Mm -hmm. And everyone left the theater on a high and they were all so excited about the new shows. And so we're very excited about that. And that creates new audiences and brings in people who maybe they're not so into the classics. They want to see the new, more contemporary shows. Harvester Arts presents a different kind of Wichita arts vibe, a small organization focused on bringing individual artists together. It offers studio spaces and exhibitions in its gallery and hosts events like Puppet Karaoke and Hungry Have a Snack, where artists can try out works with one another and get feedback. From the 100,000 foot view, that's really what we've been trying to establish is a sort of community structure where we can create programs and opportunities for artists to have those sorts of collisions with other creatives. Kristen Beal co-founded the organization in 2014. Despite being shut down during the pandemic, she found a new way to bring artists together while also impacting other residents, reclaiming an empty downtown lot as a community art space. It's become a sort of outdoor downtown studio for local artists. It's been really incredible to watch. It's definitely changed our mission and vision it was just a real blessing for that to come to us in a time where there were so many unknowns. Dancer Mina Estrada says she was first drawn to Harvester Arts because of its focus on community and collaboration. Now she works there as managing director. A part of my job was meeting with artists and, and getting feedback from them about what do you want now. And time and time again, they wanted just more programming back. I immediately started engaging with artists in the community and just rallying our community to get back at it, like get back at making art, whatever that's going to be now.
A long-established staple of the local art scene, the Wichita Symphony Orchestra has been at it for 78 years, but it too has to find a new way forward. There was nothing we had studied or learned about previously that would prepare us for something like this. Mm -hmm. It was both a crisis, but it was also an opportunity. Symphony CEO Don Reinhold faced a changed business atmosphere, while musicians who were paid per performance faced uncertain times. One answer, new collaborations with organizations like Botanica, the Wichita Gardens, and Wichita Parks and Recreation to host outdoor concerts. Those are continuing. Like groups around the country, the symphony here film performances to make available online. In its case, using a locally iconic spot, the old Cowtown Museum. Got the chance to play with it also Nathan engaged Nathan directly <laughs> with audience members <laughs> through weekly I Zoom share, Wellness like, Wednesday meetings to support mental health through music therapy. Who... And offered opportunities to hear music and speak with musicians and composers. I started a weekly Zoom recital thinking, we'll get 18 people. We were um, reaching people around the world and making friends around the country. The idea started with concertmaster and violinist Holly Mulcahy, who says reaching the audience so personally has changed her view from the stage. It makes us extremely aware that people are part of our experience. I think the pandemic did this to just about everybody in this country, realizing how desperately we need the audiences and how, you know, playing for an empty hall is difficult. Mm -hmm. And what a, an absolute partner the audience is. And so that to understand that their opinions and their friendship can be amplified by in introducing composers who are still with us, mm -hmm. it really um, accentuates the experience. The pandemic, says Don Reinhold, exacerbated trends that had been underway for years, adding an extra dose of urgency. The world has changed on us in mm -hmm. so many ways. There's more competition here for entertainment, so we have to sometimes tweak the product, think about what's going to attract them, always conscious of the need to create diversity in our audience and mm -hmm. diversity in our programming. Live music will find a way to survive because there is nothing quite like hearing a live symphony. A one, two, three, four, push and shot. Back at Music Theater Wichita, the energy was high. And Ryan Markham, too, was cautiously optimistic. We have such great arts organizations here. I'm very hopeful that we'll get back to those 2019 numbers. I think it's going to take a while and it's going to be lots of hard work for us to do that and to reach out to those people, but I do think we'll get there. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Wichita, Kansas.